Seattle Council meeting. Uh, the February 22nd, 2021 meeting of the Seattle City Council will now come to order. It is 2 o'clock p.m. I'm Lorena Gonzalez, President of the Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Sawad. Present. Council Member Strauss. Present. Council Member Herpold. Here. Council Member Juarez. Council Member Lewis. Present. Council Member Morales. Here. Council Member Mosqueda. Present. Council Member Peterson. Council President Gonzalez. Here. Seven present. Thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, as we mentioned at the end of council briefing this morning, Council Member Guarez mentioned that she might need to be excused. She did confirm that with me. So if there's no objection, Council Member Guarez will be excused from today's meeting. Hearing no objection, Council Member Juarez is excused from today's meeting. And uh, when Council Member Peterson joins us, I'll make sure to note that for um, the record, we do expect that he will be joining us today. Presentations, I'm not aware of any presentations for today. So we'll move to approval of the minutes, the minutes of the City Council meetings of, City Council meeting of February 16th, 2021 has been reviewed. If there's no objection, the minutes will be signed. Hearing no objection, the minutes are being signed. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the to the minutes? Adoption of the referral calendar. If there is no objection, the introduction referral calendar will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the introduction referral calendar is adopted. And approval of the agenda. If there is no objection, the agenda will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the agenda is adopted. Colleagues, at this time, we're going to go ahead and move into public comment. Before I do so, I did want the record to reflect that we have now been joined by Council Member Peterson. Thanks for being with us. At this time, we'll open remote public comment period for items on the City Council agenda, introduction and referral calendar, <clears throat> and the Council's work program. I want to thank everyone for their ongoing patience and cooperation as we continue to operate this remote public comment system. It remains the strong intent of the City Council to have remote public comment regularly included on meeting agendas. However, as a reminder, the City Council reserves the right to end or eliminate these public comment periods at any point if we deem that the system is being abused or no longer suitable for allowing our meetings to be conducted efficiently and effectively. I will moderate the public comment period in the following manner. The public comment period for this meeting is 20 minutes and each speaker will have two minutes to speak. I'll call on each speaker by name and in the order in which they registered on the Council's website. If you've not yet registered to speak but would like to, you can sign up before the end of public comment by going to the council's website at seattle.gov forward slash council. The public comment link is also listed on today's agenda. Once I call a speaker's name, staff will unmute the appropriate microphone and the speaker is going to hear a prompt of you have been unmuted. That's the speaker's cue that it's their turn to speak, but before doing so, they must press star six to begin speaking. Again, that is star six after you hear you have been unmuted so that we are able to hear you. Please start your public comment by giving us your name and the item that you are addressing. As a reminder, public comment should relate to an item on today's agenda, the introduction of the referral calendar or the council's work program. At about 10 seconds, you will hear a chime. That means that you've got 10 seconds to wrap up your public comment before your microphone is automatically muted to allow us to uh, call on the next speaker. Once you've completed your public comment, I'd ask that you please disconnect from the line. And if you plan to continue following this meeting, you can do so on Seattle Channel or one of the listening options listed on the agenda. Public comment period is now open and will remain open until 2.25 p.m. or until we finish um, with those uh, individuals who've signed up for public comment. Again, please remember to press star six after you hear the prompt if you have been unmuted. The first two speakers signed up and present today are Howard Gale, followed by Brian Lindman. Welcome, Howard. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Howard Gale, District 7, commenting on continuing police abuse and failed accountability. We are now in our ninth year of police reform, yet many hundreds of people assaulted, abused, and falsely arrested over the last 10 months, many still experiencing lasting mental and physical trauma, will never get to see justice from an accountability system that remains bureaucratized, paternalistic, vicious, and cut off from the community. To the list of people recently murdered by the SPD, 
Charlena Lyles, Danny Rodriguez, Ryan Smith, and Perry Caver, we can now add another person who remains nameless, also murdered by the SPD just six days ago. All of these people were individuals experiencing a mental health crisis while holding a knife, and all of them except one were people of color. But it keeps happening. 29 people have been killed by the SPD since John T. Williams, 14 of whom who had only a knife or a broken bottle or no weapon at all. Why have our accountability partners failed to recognize this long-standing pattern? Are their director salaries of over $187,000 a year not sufficient for us to expect minimal competence? Brett Hamill tweeted this morning that, quote, outrage over the closure of a garage cider business has led to more direct legislative remedy in City Hall than the past year of extreme police brutality, unquote. At this morning council's briefing, not one council member even noted the SPD murder last week. Is it because a delusional belief in the righteousness of our current police accountability system prevents you from seeing the facts that are so obvious to the rest of us? Why does Seattle not deserve the accountability system that the people of Newark, New Jersey, Nashville, Tennessee, San Diego, Portland, and Chicago have chosen? A system that even our own Washington State Legislature is now considering. But the City Council wishes to delay or exempt itself from that state legislation. A system that provides for full civilian control of investigating and sanctioning police abuse. Thank you. Uh, next up is Brian Lindman, followed by Evan Berg. And Brian, if you're with us, you need to press star six. Oh, one more time. Go ahead, Brian. I think you're unmuted. Okay, we are having some technical difficulties, I think, with Brian. So let's move to the next speaker. We'll circle back. Evan Burge, followed by Af Afua Kuyat. Good afternoon. My name is Evan Bird. I am calling in reference to agenda item 11, resolution 31993, the endorsement of the Seattle City Council for the Rainier Valley Creative District. I'm calling to urge the Seattle City Council to pass this resolution so that the uh, application may be approved for state level, uh, for, for the state level. This is a direct and meaningful method for the state of Washington to support the artists and cultural legacy of those living in the Rainier City Valley. I Once again, I urge the Seattle City Council to uh, endorse this application and I cede the remainder of my time. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling in today. Uh, next up is Afua and then we're here from Talia Wright. Hello. Go ahead. We can, can hear you. Hear you. Okay, good. Thank you. My name is Afua Kuyate. I'm here in support of resolution number 31993. I'm the executive director of Adefua Cultural Education Workshop. I have lived and worked in Rainier Valley, which is in South Seattle, for over the past 45 years. Adefua has been a key contributor to cultural enrichment processing, you know, world recognition. We provide and connect African arts and culture to youth and families. Our mission is to maintain and sustain African arts promotion of influencing healthy living and an intergenerational legacy. I'm here to urge you today to please endorse the creating of the state of Washington Rainier Valley Creative District. Our collaboration are to build deeper connections, revive and draw more events into the district and establish a thriving creative hub. These strategies are geared to increase local economy, increase tourism, and bridge South Seattle partnerships with schools and community. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for calling in uh, today. Next is uh, Talia Wright, and then we will try Brian Lindman again. Hi, this is Talia. I am calling from District 2, and I'm also uh, calling to encourage the City Council to endorse the creation of the Rainier Valley Creative District. This is a diverse cross-section of stakeholders from the community who have been meeting for several months uh, to ensure that our creative economy and artists living in the region can remain vital and supported. And so I, I hope that you will uh, endorse the, the uh, creation of the creative district so that we can move forward with our state application and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you for calling in today. Next is Brian, followed by Daniel Schmidt. Hi there. Um, my name is Brian Lindemann. Uh, I am also speaking today in reference to Resolution 31993 regarding the City of Seattle's endorsement of the creation of the Rainier Valley Creative District. I am representing two organizations I work and volunteer for, respectively, the Seattle Youth Symphony Orchestra and the Seattle World Percussion Society. Both of these Seattle-based arts organizations I serve endorse the creation of the Rainier Valley Creative District. The Creative District would serve to establish collaboration and partnership opportunities between businesses, residents, and arts organizations, increase awareness of this area's distinct and eclectic cultural history, and strengthen the creative economy and benefit the overall economic health of the region, among many other wonderful things. I ask the Seattle City Council to endorse this effort to strengthen our city's cultural fabric. Thank you. I cede the rest of my time. Thank you for calling in today. Next up is Daniel Schmidt, followed by Tor Dietrichson. And Daniel, if you're with us, Hello. just remember to hear. There you go. I can hear you now. Go for it. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm Daniel Schmidt. I'm president of the Seattle World Percussion Society, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Rainier Valley Creative District Proposal Resolution 31993. Like many arts organizations in Seattle, the Seattle World Percussion Society has been seeking ways to make our event, the annual World Rhythm Festival, more accessible for diverse audiences. We found that our location at Seattle Center was not considered accessible by audiences we were trying to reach. When we learned about Ifua's effort to create a creative district in the Rainier Valley, we were happy to get behind it just because we wanted to support the Southeast Seattle community as part of our outreach efforts. Now, however, we have a presence in the neighborhood as an anchor tenant of the Rainier Arts Center, an opportunity we found out about due to our participation in the Rainier Valley Creative District Planning Committee. This is an example of the benefit the Creative District can bring to the city at large. The goal of the Creative District is organizing and linking arts and cultural organizations, artists, and other elements of the creative economy in the Rainier Valley with the rest of the city and vice versa. Our participation in the Creative District Planning Committee has led to our decision to relocate our 2021 World Rhythm Festival to the Rainier Valley, specifically Columbia City. We believe that our festival will contribute greatly to citizens of Rainier Valley and will also give them a greater chance to contribute to the cultural life of the city of Seattle. Other arts organizations will benefit directly or indirectly from the Creative District certification by the state of Washington. I strongly encourage the council to support this resolution and I cede the rest of my time. Thank you for calling in today. Next up is Tor Dietrichson followed by John Hayden. Yes, my name is Tor Dietrichson and I'm also uh, speaking on behalf of the uh, Ordinance 31993, having to do with the Rainier Valley Creative District. And I'm a member, a board member of the Seattle World Percussion Society, which actually does a lot more than just percussion. Uh, it's music from around the world and dance. And we've been having this for almost 30 years at the Seattle Center with a lot of free workshops that benefit the community greatly. And now we're going to be working with the uh, Rainier valley creative district in doing the event down there in columbia city and we would like to get as much uh, support as we can uh, statewide as this is a very beneficial effect of uh 
bringing cultures together, which even helps combat uh, racism and other things, because we have cultures from all over the world contributing this music that people can hear and also learn about. And so I wanted to uh, help support that, uh, see if we can get uh, this uh, affiliated with the uh, Washington State Arts Commission as well. So that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to say. Thank you, Tor. Um, our last speaker who is signed up and present is John Hayden. Hi, I'm, I'm John Hayden. I am calling in about Resolution 31993, the Rainier Valley Creative District. Thank you for your time today. Uh, several of my colleagues have already spoken. I'll try not to duplicate their efforts. I am speaking today as a former board member of the Seattle World Percussion Society, uh, the nonprofit that holds the World Rhythm Festival for so many years at the Seattle Center. Uh, a little bit more about that festival. It features 100 free culturally specific drum and dance workshops uh, from around the world taught by regional teachers. And it also includes a facilitated group drumming component that engages all ages and skill levels in accessible recreational music making action. Um, as you know, uh, the Seattle Center budget has changed and due to other factors, we are moving that festival uh, into the Rainier Valley. So uh, it is currently scheduled for August 20th to 22nd this year. And I think a case can be made that the Rainier Valley is really the proper location for a world rhythm event that celebrates both diversity and commonality found in music and dance. So I support this resolution. And I look forward to building a strong and vibrant creative district. Thank you. Thank you for calling in today. I'm going to do one last refresh just in case anyone else uh, signed up and shows up present. I don't have anyone else um, who is both signed up and showing up as present on um, my sheet for public comment. So we're going to go ahead and close out the period of public comment and move on to other items of business on the agenda. First up is payment of the bills. Will the clerk please read the title? Council Bill 119999, appropriate money to pay started claims to the week of February 8th, 2021 through February 12th, 2021, and ordering the payment thereof. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I move to pass Council Bill 119999. Is there a second? Second. Thank you so much. It's been moved and seconded that the bill pass. Are there any comments on the bill? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the passage of the bill? Sawan? Yes. Strauss? Yes. Herbold? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Mosqueda? Aye. Peterson? Yes. President Gonzalez? Aye. Eight in favor, none opposed. Bill passes and the chair will sign it. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the legislation on my behalf? Will the clerk please read items one through eight? into the record. Agenda items one through eight, appointment 1789 through 1796, appointment of Rose Lou Siley Whitson as member of Seattle Planning Commission for a term to April 15th, 2021. Appointments of Michaela Daffran and Diana Quintanara Solaris as member of Seattle Planning Commission for term to April 15th, 2022. And appointments of Mark Brasseth, Roque de Herrera, Matt Hitchens, Radhika Nayer, and Alana Peterson as members of Seattle Planning Commission for term to April 15th, 2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I will move to confirm appointments 1789 through 1796. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to confirm the appointments. Councilmember Strauss, you are the sponsor of these appointments and are recognized in order to walk us through the appointments. Great. Thank you, Council President, and thank you, colleagues. These are eight appointments to the Seattle Planning Commission. Three are from the Council and five are from the Mayor. The Planning Commission advises the City on issues related to growth and development, including the Comprehensive Plan, which we will likely be making amendments to again this year, or setting up the docket at least. Uh, these appointments have come recommended to us by the Planning Commission. Uh, the Mayor's office took some of them. We took a few of them, and so I want to speak to these individuals now. Rose Whitson is a biologist with Jacobs Engineering Group, where she works on environmental permitting, as well as conducting stream, wetland, and wildlife habitat assessments. 
Michaela Daffern is the lead staff for the King County Affordable Housing Committee and has 14 years of professional experience in the planning realm. Having sitting on that committee, I can tell you that her expertise is very helpful and she'll be an asset to this commission. Diana Quintar Solaras is the mobility and urban innovation leader at WSP, the firm, not the department. Uh, prior to moving to Seattle, she led Mexico's authority, cities, Mexico City's authority of public space and transportation planning and roads office. Uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, Mexico de Efe has one of the most robust, um, uh, not rapid ride, but actually bus rapid transit systems in the world. And she, she will also be an asset to our city. Uh, next is Mark Brasseth, who is a principal at Brasseth Construction. He previously worked on land use and transportation policy uh, and planning at the Puget Sound Regional Council. So in addition to him working for Brasseth Construction. So Mark is one of the few individuals in our city who, has, who is certified as a city planner, uh, has a planning degree, has worked to understand what the regional impacts on planning is, and then he also implements these decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. So he's a really unique person perspective to have on the Planning Commission, and I'm excited to see him appointed today. Rocky De Herrera is an independent housing developer and has over 20 years of experience at, at the city, including as an urban planner, ombudsman, and business advocate, ombuds, I should say, uh, and business advocate. And my favorite part about Rocky is that he's a, uh, a resident of District 6. Matt Hutchins is an architect and principal, principal at CAST Architecture, where he works on a wide range of infill de development, including ADUs and DADUs. Uh, and my apologies for any mispronunciation here. Redhika Nair is a senior associate at Burke Consulting, where she leads a variety of planning projects for the public sector, uh, and clients all across the region. She's previously worked as a senior planner for the city of Seattle. And, and lastly, we have Alana Peterson, who is an attorney at Pacific Law Group and has particular ex experience working with the State Environmental Policy Act, the Growth Management Act, and local comprehensive plans. Those are the candidates before us today, Council President and colleagues, and I look forward to taking any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Council Member Strauss. Colleagues, are there any additional comments on the appointments? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the confirmation of appointments 1789 through 1796? Sawant? Yes. Strauss? Yes. Herbold? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Mosqueda? Aye. Peterson? No. President Gonzalez? Aye. Seven in favor, one opposed. Thank you so much. The motion carries and the appointments are confirmed. Will the clerk please read item nine into the record? The report of the Transportation and Utilities Committee, Agenda Item 9, Council Bill 119-998, authorizing the Director of the Department of Transportation to execute a transit service funding agreement with King County Metro Transit in order to implement Proposition 1 as approved by Seattle voters in the 2020 general election and ratify and confirming certain prior acts. The committee recommends the bill pass. Thank you so much, Councilmember Peterson. You're the chair of this committee, and I'm going to hand it over to you for this report. Thank you, Council President. Colleagues, Council Bill 119998 is the updated transit service agreement with King County Metro. After voters overwhelmingly approved funds for our Seattle Transportation Benefit District, we updated this transit service agreement with King County Metro for the enhanced bus service throughout Seattle. This intergovernmental agreement is important as we allocate bus service hours to get more people back on buses as our economy recovers and as our regional transportation network grows, King County is poised to approve the same document on their consent calendar with no changes within the next week. Every year we will review the details in case any future changes are needed. This bill was recommended unanimously by our committee. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Peterson. Are there any additional comments on Council Bill 119-998? 
Hearing no additional comments on the bill, will the clerk please call the roll on the passage of the bill? Sawat? Yes. Strauss? Yes. Herbold? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Mosqueda? Yes. Peterson? Yes. President Gonzalez? Aye. Eight in favor, none opposed. The bill passes and the chair will sign it. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the legislation on my behalf? Will the clerk please read item 10 into the record? Agenda item 10, resolution 31986 relating to the City Light Department and not, excuse me, acknowledging and approving the 2020 Integrated Resource Plan Progress Report as conforming with the public policy objectives of the City of Seattle and the requirements of the State of Washington and approving the progress report for the biennium September 2018 through August 2020. Committee recommends the resolution be adopted. Thank you so much, Councilmember Peterson. Uh, this resolution is also from your committee, so I'm going to hand it over to you for the committee report. Thank you, Council President. Colleagues, Resolution 31986 is the Integrated Resource Plan Progress Report from Seattle City Light, as required by state law. The requirement for a resource plan helps to ensure that our municipally owned utility continues to deliver clean and reliable electric power to our residents and businesses. We had a presentation and public hearing on the progress report at our February 3rd committee meeting. And then at our February 17 committee meeting, we unanimously recommended adoption of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any additional comments on the resolution? Hearing now, will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution? Sawat? Yes. Strauss? Yes. Herbold? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Mosqueda? Aye. Peterson? Yes. President Gonzalez? Aye. Eight in favor, none opposed. The resolution is adopted and the chair will sign it. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the legislation on my behalf? Will the clerk please read item 11 into the record? Adoption of other resolutions, agenda item 11, resolution 31993, endorsing the creation by the state of Washington of the Rainier Valley Creative District. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I move to adopt resolution 31993. Is there a second? Second been moved and seconded to adopt the resolution. Councilmember Morales, you are the sponsor of this resolution and are recognized in order to address this item. Thank you, Council President. Um, colleagues, as I mentioned this morning, this resolution supports the application to establish a Rainier Valley Creative District. Um, as we heard in public comment, a community-led group has been leading the charge excuse me, over the past several months to submit an application to the Washington State Arts Commission for the creation of this district, a creative arts district designation. Um, this kind of state certification um, endorses the creative activities in a community, um, recognizes the potential for growth and can help promote the community's creative identity, um, you know, create a, a jobs in the creative sector, attract artists and startups to a community. So really can provide an opportunity for economic development and for the growth of the artists um, and performers in our community. Um, sorry, turning that off. Um, after a, a community is certified, they're eligible for grant opportunities, technical assistance, training, um, and can get some support the state in tracking the progress of their community's creative economy. Um, so this is an important opportunity for, um, for artists and creative folks in the South End. I want to thank the planning committee, which was headed by Afua Kuyate, um, as she mentioned in her comments, includes also um, community organizations such as Wanaware, South Seattle Emerald Seed Arts, Seattle World Percussion Society, Rainier Beach Action Coalition, Rainier Beach Merchants, Communities Rise, Queen Care, Inter-African Connection, Black and Tan Hall, Northwest Tap Connection, and others. Um, so I want to thank them for their advocacy and, and really for bringing this um, forward to our office. I'm really proud to sponsor this resolution to support them. 
in their mission to build out an active arts and culture coalition that advocates for Rainier Valley's artistic and cultural community by fostering collaboration, boosting collective visibility, and addressing inequity, economic inequity. Um, currently, uh, there are, I think, eight uh, creative district communities in Washington. There is no Seattle representation, so this would be the first. Um, and it really supports the vision of a Rainier Valley that is a thriving creative hub, distinguished host of important multicultural events that can celebrate the rich heritage um, and diversity of the community. It can really serve as a center of economic opportunity for artists and residents. Um, and I would like to urge my colleagues to support this resolution uh, that urges the Washington State Arts Commission to invest in the important cultural legacy of South Seattle um, and support the leadership of the valued community members who have put this application forward to designate the Rainier Valley as a creative district in the state of Washington. Thank you so much, Councilmember Morales, for the resolution and for those um, remarks. Are there any additional comments on the resolution? Hearing no additional comments, will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution? Sawant? Yes. Strauss? Yes. Herbold? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Mosqueda? Yes. Peterson? Yes. President Gonzalez? Aye. Eight in favor, none opposed. The motion carries, the resolution is adopted, and the chair will sign it. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the legislation on my behalf? Is there any further business to come before the council? Hearing none, colleagues, this does conclude the items of business on today's agenda. Our next regularly scheduled city council meeting is set for Monday, March 1st, 2021 at 2 o'clock p.m. I hope that you all have a wonderful and safe afternoon. We're adjourned. I have something, Madam President. Just want to say happy Sorry, I, birthday, Madam President, from this weekend. Oh. We hope you had an excellent weekend and a ha very happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. Be happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Take care. <laughs>